Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the study manuals for the T's. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problems that we are about to solve are the ones that you will find on page number 82. Please turn to it. Page number 82 and today is our lesson number 31. The very first problem that you see there, 2.36, 2.36, the practice exercises, is telling us that a student needs 70% to pass the exam. We are further told that the exam itself is worth 35 points. The question simply is, how many points does the student need in order to be able to pass the exam if he needs 70% of the total marks? Well, let's find out, shall we? Essentially, what, we, what they're asking here is this. What they're asking here is 70%, 70% of 35 is what? That's what they're asking here. Well, let's find out, shall we? 70%, 70 percent, seventy percent means percent means over one hundred. Off we know means times. Off we know is times, and then thirty-five is means equals. And what is our unknown quantity, which we traditionally represent with the letter X? That's it. We're done. Seventy percent of thirty-five is what? That's it. Divide top and bottom by ten. If you divide top and bottom by ten, the zero cancels out. Let's divide top and bottom by 5's. How many 5's in a 10? 10 has 2 5's. How many 5's in 35? 35 has 7 5's. So we're left with 7 times 7 over 2. 7 times 7 over 2. 7 times 7 over 2, which is 49 over 2. And that's our answer. That's how many points he needs. We have to figure out what 49 over 2 is. What is half of 49? Well, let me know. Half of 50 is 25. So half of 49 would have to be 24 and a half. Let's find out, shall we? How many how many twos in a four? Four has two twos. How many twos in a nine? Nine has four twos. Nine nine uh, four twos are eight. So four twos are eight, and the remaining one divided by two. You see, twenty-four and a half points. That's what it is. Twenty-four and a half points. Now this was one way of doing it. This is a very classical method, very traditional method. Ignore that thing. That's just my humidifier. This is more traditional method. Uh, or rather, I meant to say the dehumidifier, not that it matters. Uh, this is more of a traditional method, method, classical method, more of an orthodox method, an academic method. Let me show you the quick and dirty method, shall we? The quick and dirty method is to simply realize, is to simply realize that 10 percent, 10 percent of 70, 10 percent of 70 we know is a tenth of 70, which is 10. If 10 percent of 70 is 10, then 70 percent would have been seven times as much. Oh, 10 percent of 70 is. I don't know what I'm doing here. We don't have 70 points. The thing is worth 35 points. 10% of 10% of 35 is how much is 10% of 35? We want to find third. We want to find 70% of 35. Let's first talk about 10%. 10% means one tenth of something. What is one tenth of 35? We just move the decimal place. It's going to be three and a half. 10% of 35 is three and a half. Now, if 10% of 35 is three and a half. 70% would have to be 7 times as much. 70% is going to be 75%. 70% of 35 is going to be 3.5 times 7. I should have done it down here. Let's do it here. 10% of 35 is 3.5. Therefore, therefore, this symbol means therefore, 70% of 35 would have to be 70% of 35 would have to be 7 times 3.5. That's it, we are done. That's our answer. We just have to figure out what that is. And of course, we're going to find that this is the same as this quantity. That's fine now, shall we? So, how do we do it? This is how we do it. How much is 7 times 3? Well, 7 3 is at 21. And what is 7 times half? 7 times half is the same as half of 7. And what is half of seven? Half of seven is three and a half. Twenty-one plus three and a half, we give we get back our twenty-four and a half that we got with the previous method. So the top method is more of a traditional method, as I said, more of an orthodox method, academic method, and this is a bit of an unorthodox method. 
where you simply ask yourself what is 10% of the thing once you find out the 10% of, of the amount the 70% is just the 7, seven times the amount that's all it is let's do the next one shall we next one which is uh, which are the practice problems there very first one we are done with this part just give me one brief second let's do the next one practice problems number one what does it say? it says the enrollment at a college went up from 625 to 710 alright so we are told that the enrollment has gone up has gone up from from 625 to 710 this part is very important this is the crucial part when you're doing a percentage problem when you're doing a problem dealing with percentage change this is the crucial part you must know where you're starting from from is the starting point and you must know where you're ending this is our final point this is our initial quantity it seems pretty obvious, it seems pretty ridiculous for me to make such a fuss about it but believe it, believe it or not, many a times people when they are in a hurry, when they are under pressure they lose track of the things. You must know what is the starting point, you must know what is the ending point. We are going from 625 to 710. And the question simply is what's the percentage change? What is the percentage change? Now I'm not going to redo everything that we have already learned before as I've told you many a times here you must watch this video in it in the proper sequence in its proper in its entirety through from day number one through wherever you are right now because I just take it for granted that we have already what we have already covered you already know obviously we can't repeating everything all the time on day number on day number 14 on day number 14 we discussed the concept of percentage change we discussed the concept of percentage change and we said that the percentage change is equal to this delta means change not the friendly skies you understand is equal to the change divided by the original number times 100 and how do we define change change is defined as the change is defined as new minus the old new number minus the old number. That's how we define the change. So that's what we have to do here. We're going to use this formula there to figure out the answer. So percentage change is what they are asking here and the percentage change is going to be our ending number, ending point, the new number which is 710. New number means the number that you end up with and what is our original point, what is our initial point, what is our starting point? Answer is 625 divided by the original number which is 625 times 100. That's our answer. We just have to simplify it. That's it. We're done. We just, from this point on, we have done it right. We have done the right work. We have the right concept here. We have the right formula. From this point on, it's just simple arithmetic is what we have to do. And if you get the answer wrong from this point on, the reason is only going to be, the reason it's going to be the, the only reason is going to be the careless, uh, is going to be the carelessness. But as far as the concept is concerned, we, we, we have conquered it. Let's figure it out, shall we? How much is 710 minus 625? Well, I don't know. I know I know 700 minus 625. That I know. 700 minus 625 is 75. Therefore, 710 minus 625 must be 85. 85 over 625 over 625 times 100. We also learned long time ago. I do not remember now right now, but at one point in time. We learned our squares and if you have not watched that video just look for the look in the titles of the videos and somewhere it will say know your squares on that day I told you or emphasized that you must know your squares 1 through 20 and a square of 25 I don't know if I don't think I, I, I covered the square of 25 I missed it inadvertently I'm telling you right now 
these things come in very handy. You must know your squares of 25 because they save you great. Uh, they, you must know your squares because knowing your squares save you great deal of time in a given problem in a situation like this. For example, if you know, if you had known that the square of 25, 25 square is 625. And if you don't believe me, do it out. Do it 25 times 25. You do it out and you will find that it is 625. So this 625 divided by 25 is 25. So how many 25 in a 625? The answer is there are 25 25s in 625. How many 25s in 100? 100 has 4 25. So I'm going to divide top and bottom by 25. We could actually divide top and bottom by 5, but we'll be here forever and ever. So let's divide 20 by 25. So how many 25s in 100? 100 says 4 25. How many 25 does 625 have? 625, 625 has 25. 25. That's it. That part is done. Let's divide top and bottom by 5 now, shall we? There's nothing else we can do here. So let's divide by 5. How many 5s in 25? 25 has 5 fives. How many 5s in 85? What the hell do I know? Let's find out, shall we? How many 5s in 8? Eight? 8 has 1 5. 8 has 1 5, not 5 5. 8 has 1 5. The remaining 3 goes and joins this 3. The remaining 3 from the 8 goes and joins the joins the 5 rather, the remaining 3 goes and joins the 5 becomes 35. How many 5's in 35? 35 has 7 5's. That's about all we can do. So the answer is 17 times 4 over 5. 17 times 4 over 5. And that part we're going to have to do it out. We're going to need some work so I need to erase that part. I need the room. Remember it was day number 14. 17 times 4, let's find out what that is, shall we? 7 4s are 28, 8 carry 2, 4 1s are 4, plus 2 is 68, so it looks like it's 68. 68 over 5, which can be written as 65 over 5 plus 3 over 5. We could do it, we, we, we could do it like this in a childish way, or we could do it here as a grown up method. Let me show you the grown up method here. 65 divided by 5 is what we are asking here. How many 5's in a 6? Six? 6 has 1 5. Cross out the 6 and put down 1 on top of it. The remaining 1 goes and joins the 8, becomes 18. How many 5's in 18? 18 has 3 5's. 3 5's are 15. So cross out the 8 and put down 3. 3 5's are 15. But we have 18. We do not have 15. We have 18, which means we have a remainder of 3. Remainder of 3 divided by what? Or oh, divided by 5. That's our answer. So that's one way of doing it. Here's another way of doing it. Of course, it's going to give you the same answer. How many fives in a 65? Let's find out, shall we? Six has one five, so cross out the one, one put down, cross out the six, put one there. The remaining one goes and joins this five, becomes 15. How many fives in a 15? 15 has three, uh, three fives, which makes sense, of course. 13, 13 times five is 65. And there is your three fifths. So it's 13 and 3 fifths, just like before. 13, 13, right here. 13 and 3 fifths. The answer is 13 and 3 fifths. But they're looking for the answer in percentage change. The question was, what's the percentage change? We can't leave it like that. It is 13 and 3 fifths percent. It is 13 and 3 fifths percent. That is true, but we can't leave it as 3 fifths. So now you have to know your fifths. You have to know your fifths. On day number 8 and 9, we learned our fifths. And from the, if you remember from day 8 and 9, you will know that 3 fifths is 60%. So the final answer is 13.6%. 13.6%. I'm going to make a note here, what we just talked about. I'm going to erase this part because I need the room. And I'm going to make a note here, only because in the very next video that we're going to do, we're going to need this information one more time. So I'm going to put it down here. On day number 8 and 9, we learned... What did we learn? We learned our tenths, we learned our fifths. These come in pair. We also learned our we learned our quarters and we learned our eighths. I don't know why I can't spell things. E I G H T. We learn our eights. 
What else did we learn on day 8 and 9? We learned our thirds and we learned our sixth. It is very important that you have these fundamental concepts at your fingertips if you have any hope at all, at all of getting a decent score. If you have to slow down for every single minute excruciating detail, you will never get anywhere. You have to know basic stuff by heart. Do you understand? So when I emphasize something, it is there for a reason. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.